the Kemetic Book of Enlightenment, also known as the Egyptian Book of the Dead. This audio presentation is read and voiced by Shakim Ra. It is provided to the public by Amin Ra University. Introduction. The Kemetic Book of Enlightenment, also known as the so-called Book of the Dead, has stood the test of time and the heat of the sun. Metaphors aside, this monumental collection of afterlife affirmations, chemical reactions, and detailed knowledge of the hereafter, the netherworld, the duat, or the afterlife, serves as a cultural milestone in comedic thought and spiritual development. It is not a book just for the dead, but more so a book for the living, for he who has knowledge upon earth also has knowledge upon death. The knowledge of the afterlife wasn't obtained at death, but long prior. Hence, the book originates from the traditions of the priesthood, dating back to the pyramid texts. Ra'unefer Amen has renamed the book Nuk Al-Neter, or I Am a Divine Being being that the book can be viewed as a simple but profound affirmation of man and woman's divinity. In other words, the Christology of later Christianity was well reflected in the afterlife science of the pharaohs. Egyptologists were often among the first in the world to have access to these papyri, including the papyrus of the Theban scribe Ani, and as such, they had little insight into its contents, and often referred to it as nothing more than a book of confusing spells to help the deceased be successful in the afterlife. While there may be partial validity to the statement, it is incomplete, and it is not holistic, for it simplifies the thoughts of ancient African intellectuals and geniuses as nothing more than spells, whereas the words contained in their so-called sacred books are regarded as the undeniable word of God, and thus the religious bias has often colored the translation of the text. The scroll was discovered in Luxor in 1888 by Egyptians trading in illegal antiquities. It was acquired by E.A. Wallace Budge as described in his autobiography by Nile and Tigris. Shortly after Budge first saw the papyrus, Egyptian police arrested several antiquities dealers and sealed up their houses, one of which contained the objects Budge had purchased from the dealers. Budge distracted the guards by offering them a meal while locals tunneled under the house's walls to retrieve the objects, including the papyrus of Ani. Stored in several custom tin boxes, the papyrus and other objects Budge had acquired were then smuggled to the principal librarian at the British Museum. It is considered to be the finest extant example of the Egyptian Book of the Dead for the purposes of providing a unique and unfiltered view of the Egyptian system of thought and symbols. We will use a combination of two lesser-known translations of the text, Nuk Al Neter by Ra'u Nefer Amin, and the Egyptian Book of the Dead, hieroglyphic translations using the trilinear method by Dr. Muata Ashby. It is also important to keep in mind that the so-called Book of the Dead is a later creation of a much older tradition dating back to the pre-dynastic era and the pyramid text. Thus, many instances of the Book of the Dead don't contain detailed mythology, and we see such a continuance dating back to the original pyramid and coffin texts. The myth was alluded to, and in some cases explained in detail, but not always. Egyptian science, however, is unified in its presentation of key themes, ideas, motifs, and concepts. Thus, the philosophical question that modern science seeks to answer with 
modern research, such as, is there life after death? Does consciousness exist outside the body? And how can cells be made to be immortal? Were already long answered by the comedic priesthood. And this book is therefore evidence of a detailed conceptual breakdown of the quantum world. Interestingly enough, the Isis thesis posits that the primary objective of the ancient Egyptians' hidden knowledge was to map the chemical path by which the genetic heritage of the deceased was preserved and vectored into a bioluminescent species that was not recycled back to Earth in the world of photosynthesis. The evidence suggests the Egyptian tree of life is the Lambda Genome. The Pharaoh's science of death made humans into gods by cloning a new species. With this knowledge, the Pharaohs insist that humanity can reinvent itself at death. However, one cannot wait until the Day of Judgment to traverse the treacherous underworld. Thousands of years ago, before Einstein and before Frank Wilshek came up with a mathematical formula for a time crystal, the ancient Egyptians had passed down a tradition of a science of a crystallized existence in the early universe, what the Gnostics called the Pleroma, the fullness, what the Kabbalists called the fullness of Israel, what the Muslims called Jana, the final abode of the righteous, what the Buddhists called Nirvana, what the Hindus call the life of Brahma. Chapter 1 Beginning of the words by which a person can come out as light. Here begin the words for coming forth as light, the teachings for becoming light itself, the light of spirit with enlightened consciousness. These praisings and words that cause one to become a glorious being are for coming out after going into the cemetery, which is the lower part of the astral plane, via the western horizon, the beautiful west, the entrance to the further nether world. These words are to be said on the day of burial, the going in of the body in a mummified form, like an insect in the form of a cocoon, that later comes out as a fully transformed being. These words are now to be spoken by the Asar Ani, the recently deceased spiritual aspirant. I praise you, divine bull, O oh, you paragon of male generative life force of the beautiful West, the abode of blessed beings after death. Hail, O oh, Tehuti, God of eternity and divinity of intellect and cosmic mind, who are within me. I see myself now, not as a human, but as a great God. Who sails in a boat like many other divinities such as Ra, I said in Heru, I am worthy to see myself in this way because I stood up for the right values when it was time to do so. When I was alive on earth, I am one of those flourishing gods and goddesses to be spiritually victorious against their enemies, the vices, worldly desires, negative thoughts, negative feelings and ignorance, on the day of weighing the words, the judgment of Ma'at, wherein the sum total of a person's experiences and spiritual maturity gained and lived by while on earth are assessed. I declare to you, Asar, the supreme divinity, that I am your advocate, I am one of those who recognizes himself as among the gods and goddesses, as among all nature, the children of Newt, the fighters who destroy the enemies of Asa, and who restrain the fiends, the evil, cosmic forces from within and from outside that try to obstruct his personality. Also, I say to Heru that just as Lord Jehudi was his advocate, I am also his advocate and I support his quest of spiritual aspiration to be successful against the unrighteousness of Set, the ego aspect of the personality, 
and I support his taking his rightful seat at the throne of the world and as the sovereign of my life. A hymn to Amin Ra from the Peret Imheru Papyrus Hunefer. Praises upon you, O Amin Ra, who are satisfied, quiescent on the pedestal of Ma'at, as well as when you make your nautical journey through the sky. All people see you as you make your journey through the sky. As you rise in the morning, you grow to fullness in your majestic essence. Your rays shine on the faces of all the peoples on earth, and yet your true essence is not known, and neither can that be expressed by means of speech by any person's mouth, nor can it be pronounced in any language. You are the entity forging a path through creation, his double it is that is seen, but it is nevertheless thee who are one. They swear by you like one who is upon him, overseeing them. They beseech you because of your listening to their pleas with attentive overhearing as one who truly cares and listens. Millions of people are observing you throughout the lands, the world over. However, they are not able to search you out. Your essence they cannot find as you travel. And as they are witnessing you in your presence on a beautiful day, as you manifest in your name, traveler of revolving paths, who traverses the waterways, rivers, lakes, canals, and streams of creation through millions of hundreds of thousands of your voyages, which are performed in peace and harmony, as you paddle along in your boat upon the waters of creation, so as to reach the dwelling place that is desired by you, you make these voyages which occur in a moment of time that is small. You do this even though you are peaceful. You do this even as you are in that peaceful state that neutralizes duality and you bring to an end of time itself. Now these words are spoken by the initiate Osiris who served as overseer of buildings, all of them in the two lands of Upper and Lower Kemet, who never, one of good spiritual taste, who is true of speech, Ma'akiru, spiritually victorious, and therefore recognized as victorious on the spiritual journey of life and the goal of spiritual enlightenment, he says, O oh, my Lord, you who are the bringer of eternity, whose very existence is that of eternity and of forever, O oh, Sun Disk, who is the face of your deeper essence, from which all sun rays shine forth out of thee and which afford life to all people. You give the glory of the sight of thee, who are the first and foremost being, leader of the morning each day. These words were spoken by the Osiris initiate, the scribe, also known as Seti Uwa, Seti the First. Thus, these words were spoken by the initiate Hunefer as adoration of Amin Ra and declaration of devotion wisdom and enlightenment afforded by the majesty Amin Ra. The chapter of repulsing those who want to seize and carry off the person's words of power in the lower region of heaven, the Netcher Kirk. These words are spoken by the aspirant by the name of Osiris, living in the flesh, who is true of speech, spiritually victorious. Get back, you shoe shoe. Get back, you crocodile, who are trying to devour me as if I was a weak and ignorant person. Stop coming towards me, because I know my power. I have power, because I know who I am. So, I have words of power. By means of these effective words of power, I command you to get back and not harm me in any way. I am that I am Osiris. I am bonded with my father and mother, 
Geb, the god of earth and nuke, the goddess of heaven. So, I am a divine being, one with Osir, and therefore a powerful and free spirit, beyond your reach. I am not a weak mortal. I am Horus, the eldest son of Osir, and Aset, and I am therefore a prince, an heir to divine glories and eternal existence. On the day of death, when there is a reckoning of the deeds done while one was alive on earth, I am Anubis, the lord of the balance, scales of Ma'at. So I judge myself, and so I am master of my fate. On that day I say, I am that I am Osir. Therefore, on that day, I am protected, and I will not suffer the fate of being eaten by crocodiles. My personality is open to God. My shining spirit comes to me, and I am strong and mighty thereby. Osiris, my inner higher self, is coming as a shining spirit, as a protector. So with this wisdom and glory coming from my higher self, my enlightened being protects me. I am the protector of my very self. My personality is resting in the place of the birth of Osiris. It is to me as it is to him. My time of youth was with him as he grew up. So my growing up was in his presence as he grew up. Therefore, my existence is his same existence. Therefore, we are one. He is I, and I am he. Anyone who knows this chapter, its devotion and identification with Osir, its special words of power, for those persons it will mean going forth into the daylight, that is, the capacity to attain spiritual enlightenment, immortality, and oneness with the Supreme Spirit, Nebuchadnezzar, the All Lord. This is assured. This means freedom from spiritual obstructions as one who is the captain of their life and not a slave to the frailties of life. I am ruler of the two lands. I am not locked or tied within the fields. I can move freely. Chapter 175 these words are spoken by Asar Ani. Ani exclaims, Hey, Lord Temu, what is going on here? What is this place that I have come to? I arrived here, but I don't see any water or air, and the depth of this place is twice the depth I expected. Seems vast. Temu responds, Living in this place is not like the physical realm where you came from, but being here is sustained by means of contentment. Also here in this realm, there are no sexual pleasures in it. Ani speaks. To be given to me is becoming an ark instead of food and drink with sexuality. Instead of those things, I get inner peace. Instead of food and drink, I get inner peace, and this is a good thing. In fact, I will be better off. Lord Temu's eyes, his spiritual vision are in your face, and you will not be a sickly person, and you will not be deprived. You will not feel as if you are missing out on anything, because the fullness of spirit will be in your perspective, as opposed to being afflicted by the limited vision of individuality and myopic self-regard based on egocentricity. Every god and goddess will transmit their thrones to him, Osiris Ani, and he will be the foremost being existing for millions of years. It is the throne of your son Heru. This is good, and has said it, Temu, that there will be a beautiful existence as he gives to thee, princes and nobles. It is he, however, who will rule your thrones, because you are Osir, and you rule in heaven, and your son rules on earth for you. It is he who is heir to the throne within the lake of double fire, 
located in the Duat, where one can bask in the rays of Ra in his presence and become purified, thereby as decreed. Here, however, he may see me as his second and so that my personality may see his personality, he being the Lord Temu. I have a question. What is the duration of life in this form of good existence? The answer, for you, it will be a duration of millions, of millions of years. This is a granting to you the status of the greatness of God who is great. It is also about how I dismantle what was created for me, my illusory time and space existence, all of it. It is like when the earth, this one we stand on, came forth by means of Nunu, this primordial being who existed in the all-pervading, undifferentiated ocean that gave rise to creation and life unto himself in that former condition the way he was before he emerged. I am fated with the god Osiris, since I am also Osiris, so I share his fate and his being chief of all beings, and also with enlightenment, the return to how he was in the beginning, before the creation emerged, that original condition of his when he was pure and without taint or dismemberment. That condition is mine too. In adoration to Ra by Hunefer. Adorations to the god Ra when he rises as the sun in the eastern horizon of heaven, emerging from the heaven netherworld to shine on the physical plane. These are words spoken by the initiate, whose name is Osiris, one of good sense of taste, or one who is sensitive to the flavor of spiritual life, who is righteous. Adorations to you, who are the entity manifesting as Ra, the creator, when shining in the sky, and also when he is in the form of Temu, when he is setting at sunset. You rise twice, lighting up the world, are you? And you do this twice. Your rising is your crown, as we recognize you as the king of all the gods and goddesses. You are the Lord of heaven, the astral plane, and the Lord of the earth and physical creation. You are also the maker of heavenly beings and earthly beings. You are the supreme being, only one who self-created itself at the time of the beginning. You are the maker of the physical universe and creator of human beings, maker of the primeval ocean, the substratum from which creation is made, creator of the Nile River, which sustains life in our land, and maker of water and the source that causes that water to have life, sustaining properties. And you are also responsible for the inner weaving of the mountains and all physical creation. You are the one who caused human beings to come into existence and likewise cattle and other animals. You are the maker of heaven and earth. Praises be to you, the personality which is embraced even more tied with the justice, order, and truth of existence. Ra strides along twice daily, at morning and evening, over the heavens with contented heart, full of joy. And the sacred lake in the nether world has become peaceful. Also, the serpent Neka, a negative spirit who is opposed to Ra and his daily course through the sky. He has been defeated and has fallen. So the obstacle to Ra shining forward has been removed. The arms of that enemy of Ra have been cut off. The bolt of the rising sun received breezes to make its journey effective. And the one who resides in the shrine, his heart is delighted at seeing the rising of Ra in his full power and glory up to the heaven, as all properly prepared boat voyages do. Ra emerges from the primeval ocean of creation, 
the undifferentiated primordial consciousness that is the body of Ra. Ra does this with all righteousness and truth and order. He does this as the same divine child. Who is the inheritor of timelessness and the one who gave birth to himself by himself? Ra is one who is great and his forms are multifarious. He is monarch of creation and prince of Heliopolis, the site of the first creation, Ra's royal city. You move through time until forever, the end of time praises you there as you rise and roll towards the evening horizon. Shouts of exaltation are heard in your boat of the evening. We adore you in your form of Amun-Ra, hidden radiance as you move in peace and balance, and your person is the very embodiment of righteousness, order, truth, and justice. Chapter 4 and 17 Heru with two heads and two paths, a follower of Nebrajer from the Pert M. Heru, from the Papyrus Nepseni. Another way to understand it is we are talking about Heru when he is in the state where he has two heads, one being under the influence or control of Ma'at order and truth, and the other under the influence of unrighteousness and wrongdoing, set. To the person who follows order and truth and influence of righteousness, they get that as a result of their righteousness. I have vitality while I exist on earth, even as I come into the presence of Ra, and as a departed soul. As my death was a good death, and I come into the presence of Osiris, I will not receive the offerings of that hidden God that mets out pain to the unrighteous that will not come into me. The heavenly person will not be in their burning altars, so that fate does not apply, not to me, because I am in the following of Nebuchadnezzar, the awe-encompassing divinity, the fullness, in accordance with the writings of the God-creator Kepper. Chapter 19 of the Pert M. Heru from the Papyrus Auf Ankh Chapter This is a chapter of breathing air and words who have power over the cemetery. The Netrakert Netrakert Emu Mema Nafu Susent Ra this is the chapter of breathing air and words who have power over the water in the cemetery, which is the lower part of heaven and its entranceway. Words spoken by the aspirant Osiris living in the flesh. Hail God Hopi, unified, who unites the waters of creation with life-giving essence, you in your name of weaver of the heavens. Give thee to me power, Give to me, I who am called Osiris, living in the flesh. Let me have spiritual victory and enlightenment just like Sekhmet when she was lost in the world as a deluded soul, but was brought back to discover her enlightenment through the grace of her preceptor. At the time of adversity of Osiris living in the flesh, let him attain enlightenment even in the time of darkness, of great illness, helplessness, and depression, or death of the body. Allow this Osiris to go forward to attain enlightenment. Allow this initiate Osiris Ani, living in the flesh, to go forward to attain enlightenment, to be able to breathe joyfully in the abode of inundation where the soul is immersed in the fullness of spirit, like those honored ancestors and elders who were originally ignorant and yet went forth onward to attaining enlightenment. Let me be like him on the spiritual journey 
provided with full provisions and wherewithal to succeed on the spiritual quest. The way opens to Jedu, the abode of the backbone of the god Asar, the higher psycho-spiritual consciousness centers, and the abode of the god Osiris, the center of existence, upon discovering which the soul becomes rooted in its divine source and discovers higher consciousness. So too, it is homage to initiate Osiris Ani, living in the flesh, who is victorious in enlightenment. His nostrils open up in Jadu, so he breathes after death and lives on in spirit sustenance. He has discovered supreme peace, Hetep, the union of opposites that leads to non-duality. In the house that was built for him in the city of Anu, that city of Ra and first place of creation. The house built in the city of Anu by the goddess Hesheta. It was caused to be raised for Osiris living in the flesh by the god Kanum, who is its foundation and guide for the movements of the image of the personality that is to reside there thusly. The aspirant is to assume these postures when deemed appropriate. If the air is blowing to him from the north part of heaven, then move and face north from the south and breathe and rest in the south facing north. Likewise, if air is coming in from the west, then rest in the east, face from the east part of heaven to the west and relax. Finally, if it blows from the east, then rest to or in the west, drawing in the breath. Now, with the personality situated properly, focus on the part of the head of the eyebrows. You, Osiris, living in the flesh, you, enlightened being. Breathe in and restrain the breath. The way is open to enter whichever part of the spirit realm he may want to go, and his backbone is there. Chapter 18 and 110 of the Peret Imheru The beginning of the chapter of the realm of peace in the netherworld where an aspiring goes to make peace, Hetep, between the lower self, Seth, and the higher self, Heru in the Book of Enlightenment for Transcending Duality and Becoming Enlightened, to go in and out of eternity, to go in and out of the cemetery, the lower part of heaven, after the physical death, so as to find the passage to the higher nether world regions, and from the field of peace, then join in the region of the blessed, perfect souls who are now experiencing peace. In the district of the Great Mistress of Freedom, may I have power through perfect shining spirit being and in the ability to use the plow in that region, and may I reap in there, eat and drink in there, in that region of the nether world, which is a heavenly region which after death, the personality can exist in a similar or different form to that on earth and carry on activities and enjoyments just as is done by those living on earth. Asar Ani speaks, Ani, the Enlightened One, recalling the Asarian resurrection teaching says, This is a struggle between Horus mind and Seth mind within my personality. It is to be settled in the field of peace, in that region of the nether world. In the Asarian resurrection saga, Horus and Seth battled over control of the personality, and Horus was temporarily beaten, and Seth might have wrested control over Horus' testicles, his generative vital life force. But despite that temporary victory of Seth, for Horus there was sight through the wall surrounding the field of peace region of the nether world, so there is a path to resolve the issue there. Or his mind being lucid unlike others whose consciousness is opaque so they cannot see into those regions of the field of peace. He was able to discover the path to inner peace or the harmony, balance and union of opposites, Heru and Set. The soul of Heru has been freed from within his own being, from the grasp of Seth, the divine testicles 
the generative power of spiritual aspiration have been rescued and are now in service of spiritual enlightenment as opposed to worldly illusions and desires. In the inner chamber of the body of Heru, the abode of spiritual awakening, Heru, the spiritual aspirant, is free. I crowned him in the temple of Shu, in the stars, the temple stars, he who is lord of air and space, the nexus between heaven and earth, the conduit between the physical realm and the astral, and a luminous manifestation of Ra himself, who expresses through the gods and goddesses on earth. I indeed have achieved peace in the realm guided by him, a dominion of fullness of the group of his elder gods and goddesses under his guidance and his management. He made peace between the gods Heru and Seth, the overseers of life. He created what is good by bringing an offering of peace, which is the union of opposites that brings duality to an end. Thereby he made peace between the combatants, one who represents the quality of righteousness versus the other, who represents the quality of egoism. Which is their duty? To combat and also make peace. He cuts the crops, in other words, the hair of the fighters, which was obstructing their vision of non-duality, by falling over their foreheads and blocking their third eye, the spiritual vision beyond the other two eyes that perceive the worldly existence. He forced away drove out the trouble their children, the personalities that they would have given rise to in the future, the incarnations in human existence, and the giving birth to deluded thoughts and worldly desires born of ignorance and egoism that would have occurred while under the unenlightened state of mind affected by the ongoing conflict. Also removed is what have might have been suffered otherwise, and he struck it down and destroyed that trouble utterly. I have power to control the conflict between Horus and Seth because I know the teaching. I know Horus and Seth. I know myself. Even as I sail over the waters of the nether world and I arrive at the towns and districts of the nether world, unobstructed, I have dominion over my mouth, which is the emancipation of spirit and freedom to express my consciousness without the obstructions of self, the ego, due to spiritual ignorance. May I be given enlightenment. The gods and goddesses do not have power over the enlightened beings, no power within. I am equipped, qualified, and ready to be in your field, your realm of peace. My desires are yours and my actions yours they are, O oh, shoot. Lord of the field of peace, you who are the luminous manifestation of Ra in this realm. I realize that you and I are one, so my desires and actions are as powerful as yours, and I can do as I please, as you do, because I am you, and you are me. Chapter 11 and 23 This is the chapter of the ancient Egyptian Book of Enlightenment for the opening of the mouth of Osiris, who is in this case the scribe by the name Ani. Opening the mouth means opening the mind to unobstructed higher consciousness. So the opening of the mouth points to the Earth's magnetosphere and the opening of the Earth's magnetic field lines. These are the words to be said that accomplish the desired opening process of higher consciousness in the flesh and also after death. My mouth is to be opened by the god Ptah. He has untied the wrappings that were over my mouth, dually as I was wrapped as a mummy, to free my lower conscious and my higher consciousness from the wrappings that were blocking my mouth, shutting me in the miserable and limited mortal existence. Those wrappings were placed over my mouth. In my town, of my local time and space residents who refers me to time and space and physical human existence. But now comes in Lord Jehudi, filled and equipped with words of power that have the capacity to remove obstacles 
and transform the mind. And he is loaded with those powers to assist the worthy spiritual aspirant to overcome that which binds the mouth doubly, the fetters of set. However, there is a force that repulses that blocking, that obstruction from the fetters of set. The god Tim, the lord of Heliopolis, Anu, the site of the first creation, Ra's royal city, and third aspect of Ra, who brings to a successful completion the spiritual journey, is there to tear down those fetters of set. Open is my mouth with clarity and expansion. My consciousness awareness is expanded. Owing to Shu who used his one-pointed harpoon, the non-dual vision of spirit that pierces and destroys the ignorance of duality in me. He did this with the iron instrument made of the gods and goddesses that fell from the sky. That opens the mouth and mind, in other words, opens consciousness and frees the mind from delusions. I am the goddess Sekhmet, who sits on the great pedestal of Ma'at, the source of the wind of life within the great heavens, and allows the strength of life to sustain itself and the spiritual strength to attain victory and enlightenment. That is who I am, the ultimate understanding goddess and innermost reality who is the heart of the souls of Anu, the site of the first creation, Ra's royal city. As for the words of power, all words spoken against me, the company of gods and goddesses will stand up for me against those negative words that seek to name me as having lived unrighteously. The company of gods and goddesses will stand up for me united in force on my behalf due to my faith, virtue, and knowing the wisdom of this chapter. Coffin text invocation 714 becoming noon, the primeval ocean. I am the god noon, the only one, without a second or another. As I am noon himself, I am Kepara, the creator, who created creation. As concerns myself, I performed the creation through a grand thing that was done by me. I came into being by creating creation out of myself, from my own fullness, which is the primeval ocean, undifferentiated consciousness. So, just as I am full, the creation I created out of myself is also full of me and as me. I am the creator himself who places creation in place for the God. One and the same. So God was in the place where time and space is currently, but creation is composed of God. So they are equivalent, actually the same thing in different form from within himself. That creation that came forth from his egg, from which sprang forth the creation of the divine spirit. I am the same one, the God of the inundation, the primeval waters, which itself is me, who was in it, in the primeval waters from which all creation was brought forth by me. Behold, it is the God Hehu, the primeval winds that stirred up the primeval ocean and caused waves to take shape into the forms of creation. He goes out for me to do the work of creation. Behold, I am the vitality, the life-giving fire, life force, strength, soundness, health of the creation. I have been the source and reason that created creation from my body parts. I am the maker of building, fashioning things, and also the one who tears them down. So I am the creator and the destroyer of creation. As I see fit to do with things, the objects of creation that are mine, to do with as I please in accordance with my heart's desire. Chapter 31 and 64 Chapter of Coming Forth as Light This is the chapter of knowing that is to be known in order to attain enlightenment all in a single chapter. 
These words are to be said by Osiris living in the flesh. It is he who lives again and has not died. These are his words. I am yesterday. It is me. I also know tomorrow. He is an enlightened personality by virtue of having been born again a second time, now beyond worldly life and into spiritual consciousness. What has been said just now is a great mystery of the soul and what comes next will elaborate further. The heavenly person in the inner shrine is the heart, the essence, the source. This is the divine self, the God Asa, who is no longer lying horizontal in repose of death. Rather, this personality has been raised erect, strong as a wall, and identified with that. He is I, and I am he. We are one and the same, inexorably tied together. When entering to see the divinity, the special word should enter the ears like medicine. When in the duat, the nether world, there should be no sin, no taint of wrongdoing against you from the mother. The mother is the heart, which accumulates the sum total of the actions of the past, are you, that impel and compel the fate of the future of the soul. This is for me a protection against a negative fate after death. Not is there found in me any going in the wrong direction against righteousness, and that has allowed there to be no reason for me to cry as I face the judgment based on my actions while alive on earth in the past or in previous lives. I see through my journeys of this life and lifetimes and I witness the rituals and festival of the last quarter of the month a most important one in the city of Osiris in the appearance of the journey of the divine boat, which increased my devotion and spiritual purity. The devourer who watches over the balance so as to eat the hearts of the unrighteous souls in the region of the West, the hidden place in the nether world. Amid, that is who I am, so I will not be eaten for I am the embodiment of truth and righteousness and the dispenser of justice. I was conceived by the woman that carried and then laid down the load and then turned away absolutely without looking back. That is the opposite of how people live in the world. So the mother mind that gave birth to me now goes in a different direction from me and I am free from that path of worldly delusion. Who is it? It is Heru whose eye shines on the earth. That name, Heru, is my name. He is I, and I am him. We are one and the same. In comparison to me, in the form of the Lion God, there is nothing more exalted. The name is Blossoms of Shu. That is, the God Shu, who is a manifestation of Ra, an expression of air, its power, vitality, and space ether. That is actually my very self. It is I who causes the fullness of creation, and that is the highest good. I am the lion divinity that sun divinity Shu, carrying the creation in his arms. In Kemet, the venerable land, it is you who are in me and I am in you. Your image, your form, that is me. I go inside into the region of Shakim, which is the abode of the life force that enlivens the personality through the solar lion power of that divinity. The inner shrine, the holy of holies, the place of leonine power, becoming an ark through Shakim. In that air, in that light, that is Shu, then I come forth now as an enlightened being. Therefore, I am Osiris. It is that divinity that is the source of my life. Truly, that is also the source, sustaining the manifestations of all people. This mystery teaching of this chapter will make a person attain spiritual victory, enlightenment. That person will be a controller, 
a master while on earth. In the natural world, it means assuming all forms. It means realizing oneness with all things. This realization of oneness is a protection from the great divinity, preventing any adverse action from any form since a form that is oneself would not hurt oneself. This chapter was found in the city of Kemenu inscribed on the soles of the feet of the god of Kemenu, Lord Jehudi and Iron, which comes from the stars as a gift of the divine. These writings were in blue color on the soles of the feet of Jehudi, divinity, the blue color of transcendental consciousness. These writings were found in the time of Pharaoh Men Ka'u Ra, who was spiritually victorious. Now, the prince, Hardajeth, who was then functioning as a priest, going in the temples to inspect them in the capacity of overseer for himself. This chapter penetrated this person, and he became introspective, prayerful, awestruck, and engaged in meditative trance for a period of time. He then brought the scripture on a sledge and a box of copper to the king and presented this writing containing the great mystery to him in private. When the looking with the eye stops, the hearing stops, when the outgoing speech is turned to inwards and when there is abstaining from sexual relations and when no meat or fish is consumed, this chapter is to be recited by an amulet of a scarab purified with gold, symbolizing being anchored in fullness of heart, immortality, and establishment in the spiritual personality. This amulet is placed over the heart and its wisdom in the unconscious mind. A person should do this for the ritual of opening the mouth, together with a jar with water from the head of the celestial waters. The speech of a person should be the words of power thusly. My heart, my mother, my heart, my mother, the heart in my breast, the repository of the record of my past deeds upon which the great judgment is based, that decides my fate, and through which I transform and manifest in varied incarnations and forms. Do not stand up as a witness against me when I come before the councils of gods and goddesses who judge the soul, and do not turn away from me when I come into the presence of the master of the scales, Lord Anubis. O oh, Lord Anubis, your very being is in your body. Your very being is in my body. The cosmic force of the god Kanun, the virile creator, is in me, is my vitality. As you go forth to the good house, as to the coffin's dwelling place, may there be no indignations against me. May no disgrace come to my name from them and the Lord of Eternity. As pertaining to me, this means standing as a positive witness in the house of goodness, experiencing happiness there, and as I have been judged righteous through the words of power that I possess and am a master of, that provide purity of heart, that afford knowledge and immortality. As pertaining to me, this means I am a divinity and a protected being. I am your child, you who exist within there, the house of goodness. Therefore, I am a pure being, a divinity knowing myself as your offspring and your very existence, one with you, I here, and you there. I am you, and you are me. Chapter 30, Section A My heart, my heart, my mother, my heart, my heart, which is the mother which gives birth to my desires that cause my souls coming into human incarnation. At the time of my judgment in the hall of Ma'ati, in the presence of the Lord of the Judgment, Lord Anubis, when you step up to bear witness about me, O oh my heart, the place in my unconscious mind, wherein are stored impressions of my past, the sum, total of my thoughts, feelings and actions over many lifetimes. Do not obstruct my spiritual journey by bearing witness about negative things that I may have done while alive in the land of the living. Since I strive to follow my art, 
and a life of righteousness, order, and truth. So there should be no negative things to bear witness about. When you speak about me, report about me as one who lived in a manner not against what is real, what really exists, the ever-presence, abiding reality, God as what is real and not the illusory world of time and space, as if it were an abiding reality. So do not speak about me as being an advocate of that which is egoistic, self-serving against truth, such as the ideal of greed, callousness, and the idea of physical vanity ignoring the ephemeral nature of life and dismissing the infinite and immortal spirit beyond the ephemeral time and space relative reality of life. Bear witness about me as one who lived in a manner, not against what is right and truth, order and justice. A hymn by Osset from chapter 7, section 3. These words are spoken by the goddess Osset. I come to you in a row as your protector I blow from me to you, the liberating and rejuvenating air from the north with fullness of consciousness, which cleanses your nose to the nostrils for your body. This air comes in the form of the god Temu, who is in the north, which is the spirit essence of Ra, the source and sustenance of all life, and the successful completion of the spiritual journey. I have collected the pieces of your throat for you so you can breathe and live. I pieced your throat back together and cleared obstructions to the air from Temu that conveys the vital life force. So now you have the capacity to experience an obstructed reality. So now you do not have internal obstructions to existing as a conscious living being. I've given to you the capacity to exist in the form of a divine God, and in your presence I present to you your enemies which have fallen under your feet. So now you do not have external obstructions to existing in your divine form. By doing these things, the goddess of intuitional wisdom, the embodiment of wisdom have caused for you to have a divine state in heaven over which you have power and dominion and all the gods and goddesses behold you. The chapter of remembering one's name after death. This is the chapter that provides the activation of remembering one's name while in the cemetery, which is the region of the lower part of heaven, that place that is entered after leaving the land of the living, and where the movement toward the inner nether world begins. May my name be given to me even while I may still be in my burial chamber as I prepare for the journey into the Duat netherworld. May I remember my name, the essence of who I am, when my ethical conscience is tested in the house of fire in the netherworld. On the night where it takes place, the computing years and accounting for the deeds in my time while I was on earth. I am within a divine being. I rest myself in the eastern part of heaven, which is where I enter the nether world, after exiting the land of the living. In the beautiful west of the land of the living on earth, from the land of the living, I go to the nether kert, and from there I am born into the nether world and discover higher consciousness. As I move, and as I progress, I move towards the center where the supreme being is, since I know my name, and I also know their names, the essential nature of all of them, which affords power over that which is known, I can speak their names and thereby control and neutralize their powers over me. Thus, I have the freedom to go forward to my destination, the ultimate abode of the divine, unobstructed.